Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another case study uh, from the EMS division. My name is Chris Ortiz. I'm the EMS division chief, and today I am joined by Lieutenant Shannon Van Meer. Happy to be here. Thanks for joining us again. I appreciate you. So today we're going to talk about a call that you were on while assigned to Rescue 22, um, mm -hmm. ran with Engine 22, and the call was for a field delivery. Right, so we got a 21-year-old female in active labor. You got it as an imminent delivery, uh, 24 Delta three. Tell me some of the things that are running through your mind as you're in route to that call. So looking at the notes, it, uh, 21 year old female, and it said first pregnancy. So my kind of initial thoughts were like, unless baby's crowning, this could potentially take a while. Deliveries, depending on every, everyone's different, every delivery is a little different. Um, but just looking at the notes, possibly thinking that this might not necessarily be a field delivery, depending on what we walk into and what we see when we first get there. Um, I had, I always kind of pull up the protocols on the way to the call. So for the delivery and then also for like uh, neonatal resuscitation as well and kind of going over like we don't give Narcan, uh, just really the importance of like warm, dry stimulate. If any problems is kind of definitely oxygenation is, is our best bet. So just kind of pre-talking those things, making sure that we get all of our equipment off the truck when we get there to make sure we just have everything inside. Um, but just kind of pre-gaming pre and pre-planning depending on what it is that we walked into when we got there. Outstanding. So you guys arrive on scene, um, you enter the residence. Talk us through what you saw when you walked in. So it was a little like everyone's, you know, everyone's kind of a little amped up and um, our, our engine got there right before us. Um, so they got, you know, they had all their bags in there. Um, the the patient's mom was there and she wasn't frantic, but she was a little, you know, she was a little anxious. Um, we walk in and the, the patient is in the bathtub um, in labor and she's, the, the bathtub is full of water. Um, so I guess the patient's water had broken about an hour ago and they weren't planning on having a home delivery. They were going to, um, they were going to go to the birthing center, but the patient just was like, I, I don't think we're gonna make it. So put herself in the bathtub, filled it up with water, and and from there she she really did not wanna get out of that bathtub. Sure. So. And it kind of changes your thought process too as opposed to arriving on scene and you're gonna load and go and get all that stuff done because she's in the bathtub. She knows her body better than right. anybody else, so she knows it's coming, so you kind of have to prepare for that. So that was that's fantastic. It kind of changes your, your mindset for sure. I, I absolutely kind of tried to convince her. When we got in, her contractions were about two minutes apart, pretty consistent. Like I said, the, her water had broken, but we visualized and there, the baby was not crowning at that point. So I was I was trying to kind of convince the patient to, you know, maybe like let's go to the hospital or at least let's move to the bed or something. And she was very adamant. She's all like, I do not want to get out of this tub. And so I wanted to respect that. This is her delivery. It's, it's you know, this is what she's comfortable with. So we'll make it work. That's fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing that up. So as far as your initial assessment, vital signs ultimately stable. Yeah. Um, what kind of history did she provide to you that? She, um, in, in terms of herself, she was a healthy, young, 21-year-old female, um, first pregnancy, um, first delivery. So she, she had no medical history of her, of her own. She had been receiving prenatal care um, and no complications, no known complications. Uh, her last ultrasound baby was in the head down position. So that's an, an important thing to note. Only one fetus and uh, had just been taking prenatals was the only like medication that she had been taking. Excellent. And that's great history that you alluded to. So you talked about how you knew that um, she was G1, P0, um, the time from when her water broke to where we were now, the time between contractions, we talked about that. And you had noted there was no crowning yet, but she felt like it was coming. So her contractions, were they getting stronger in the time that you were there? Or how many did you visualize? They seemed to, so I had, I was timing them on my watch and they kind of went from about two minutes apart to around a minute and a half. Um, lasting i mean she wasn't i tried to coach her to tell me when they were starting and ending but obviously she had other things on her mind um but so i mean you can kind of tell like you could i could from her body language and from you know the obvious distress and pain that she was in um i could kind of tell when the contractions were starting and and ending um so i was trying to time them myself and they were they were pretty consistent and they were getting a little closer together okay so so in that time frame because that's great to know so you're timing them you see that they're getting closer it's pretty obvious that we're probably going to deliver yeah. here 
Can you talk through some of the interventions that you completed like in preparation for the delivery? So after I kind of had tried to coach and convince the mom to either get out of the tub or go to the hospital and she was adamant that she was not, I was like, okay, well then I was like, I started to set up for the field delivery. So we started, um, we started an IV, we started an 18 gauge um, on mom. We put her on just a couple liters of oxygen, uh, nasal cannula entitled just to monitor that. Um, her vitals, like I said, were all relatively stable, but we got um, we got the OB kit out and ready to go, um, and we got a bunch of towels because the patient was in the bathtub, so we knew that you know she was wet, and we didn't want baby to get wet and cold after the delivery. So we just kind of set ourselves up um, to have the delivery there. And you had documented we we saw about four contractions. And then what happened after that fourth contraction? So after that, we we visualized some hair and the baby was actually starting to starting to crown. Um, and that's when we were definitely like, okay, this is, this is actually going to happen here and probably relatively quickly. And it did, I think, um, after another four or five pushes and contractions, baby, baby was out. Awesome. So no complications as far as the baby being delivered. No baby didn't, it didn't seem, cause sometimes you can see there's like, you can kind of see the progression obviously. Um, and at no point did it seem like the baby was stuck or, um, like the baby's head was making good progress and it wasn't like coming and then getting sucked back in or, um, so we, during the pushes and the contractions, once the kind of the head of the baby was out, we were just applied very gentle back pressure. So we didn't have an explosive delivery. Um, and the other thing that we did do, right before the baby's head delivered was we drained the water in the, in the tub. So and that was my next question too, yeah. if it was still a water delivery or if we had drained it and then we delivered. From so I, we drained, we made the decision and we talked about it cause people do have water births and home deliveries, but they're in a big round tub with lots of room. Um, and just kind of based upon the mom's position and everything, we just were like, well, we, we're, we're going to just drain the water so that also, cause the mom, especially since mom really didn't want to move once baby was delivered, I didn't want the baby sitting in a, in a wet, cold bathtub. Great thought. All right. So baby delivers boy or girl, a little girl. And they didn't know they, awesome. it was, it was an unknown gender when, um, before. So, and it was funny cause I, maybe cause I have a little girl, I kept saying, I kept referring to the baby as she, and then it ended up being a girl. So, but it was, it was a, it was a good, happy moment. Um, uh, baby delivered. And we, again, we had drained the water in the tub. Biggest thing was, is knowing that baby needs to be warm. Um, and so we had actually cut the mom's shirt so that she, cause otherwise she wanted to do skin to skin, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, we, we, we wanted to make sure that she got that. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that the baby stayed warm. So we cut the wet shirt off of mom, dried mom off real good. Um, baby came out good, good, strong cry, good muscle tone. All babies, when they come out, like she was a little, her skin color was a little purplish, which is pretty normal. Um, dried her off real good and then put her right on mom. Um, and again, immediately good, good, strong cry, good, healthy baby. Everyone was happy. <laughs> That's good, fantastic. Good moment, yeah. And the APGAR scoring, which you gave the baby based on what you guys saw, what you just talked about, what score did the baby come out with? I think year? initially, I think the baby was at eight. Okay. So I mean, that's a good that's a good AP, APGAR. We didn't we didn't see any need to have to um, to ventilate the baby. And another point, like my my pipeman handed us the bulb syringe. Um, I was always taught that unless there's like meconium or an actual reason to suction, um, that suctioning can sometimes stimulate that vagus nerve and cause the baby to brady down, which is can be obviously pretty dangerous. So we didn't see any of that. So we had no need to suction. Um, if you do need to suction, I was always taught to, you, you suction the mouth first and then the nose. Um, some people remember it, one mouth, two nostrils, or the way I remember it is it's alphabetical. You go M and then N. So just, I don't know, silly little tricks to help you remember the order of suctioning if you need to do that. The alphabetical ordering is my the way my brain works too, Me so too, that's yeah. what I've always that's, that's what I've always done. <laughs> um, but there was no need to suction, so we just kind of made sure warm, dry, stimulate, put baby right on mom, and 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 then after that, um, after a couple minutes and sort of things calmed down, then we um, then mom was willing to get out of the tub and be transported, transport mom and baby to the hospital. Excellent. So. The cord, you obviously guys, you clamped and cut that yes. cord yourself, loaded uh, the patient onto the stretcher. Um, talk about the, the obviously the mom's in pain. And when we see somebody in pain, there's obviously our first inclination is to try to treat that pain. Right. 
Can you talk through why we don't do that or why you prefer not to use any type of analgesic for... So I was always taught that unfortunately we're not allowed to give pain management in the field. Um, and it, it is, it is always your kind of inclination to want to, um, but passing that on to baby, that's, you know, we're, we're not, we're not allowed to do that. So that's not in our protocols. And, um, I think that we were there, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but we were there really emotionally supporting her and coaching her. And, um, and she was, she was great. She really was, she handled it very well, um, without any drugs and without any pain management. So great. Unfortunately, a topic that we have to discuss sometimes is, um, situations to where the baby is born and mom had been utilizing, um, narcotics, um, baby comes out, um, and has those narcotics in their system as well. You had mentioned it earlier about not wanting to give the baby Narcan. Can you expand Correct. on that? So in the, in, in the neonatal baby, we don't give the Narcan because that can potentially throw them into withdrawals and they can have seizures. Um, and that's, that's just a whole nother situation that luckily we did not have to deal with for this call. Um, but I made sure that we all kind of were aware because obviously it depends on kind of unfortunately where you're at in the city, but we definitely like you always have kind of a, an index of suspicion on certain calls or with certain patients. And if, especially if they admit to drug use, just being really aware that like we don't, we don't give Narcan to kiddos. Um, the best thing to do warm, dry, stimulate, and then ventilate them. That's, that's, that's our treatment for those babies that come out that could be potentially a little respiratory depressed because of some drugs in the system. That's fantastic. And yeah, they're not crying, providing that positive pressure uh, ventilation just to help them along. The yeah. warm drying and stimulate, we've hit on it multiple times during the podcast, but that's absolutely yeah. the key. Um, Cause as we know, moms have been doing this for a really long time. Yeah. And uh, like you said, we're there as support to be able to help. And if emergency happens, then we're able to treat it. But really, we're just there more in a, in a support capacity. Absolutely. So that's fantastic. So talk us through that point when baby had delivered. We've obviously cut and clamped the cord. As far as the transition from getting the patient from the tub to the ambulance, can you walk, walk us through how you were able to accomplish that? Sure. So after we drained the water, clamped cut the cord um mom was then willing to 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 get up out of the out of the tub um so she was the placenta hadn't delivered yet um but she was able to she was able to get up on her own so i took i took baby and i had i had her um and then the patient was assisted by two of our pipe men um out of the very small bathroom and onto five fives gurney and then we were able to transport both mom and baby um to rest okay you got your stork pins Crew got the stork pins delivered by Dr. Pruitt, so that's a that's a fantastic thing. We see so many calls uh, with bad outcomes, and I think it's it's refreshing to have calls like this where everyone's happy. It's a yeah. happy moment, right, and a good outcome. So, mom transported, baby healthy, and um, that's really all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely. The one um, the one kind of vital sign that uh, was. For the baby, we, we did check the baby's BGL, and the baby's initial BGL was like in the 40s, which is normal for a newborn baby. Um, so if you see that vital sign after you deliver and you do check a BGL on the baby, like I think for the rest of us, most of the time we see that number, and that's that's kind of a scary number, but that's normal for a newborn baby. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we were able to, to deliver um, the baby, healthy, healthy baby, healthy, happy mom, and we were able to get her to rest and up to the labor and delivery unit and everyone was everyone was excited so it was a good call and just real quick we'll touch on that so obviously these these uh patients when we're transporting them will typically assist in the transport because really we're dealing with two patients yes. at that time so whether we're transporting or jumping in albuquerque ambulance and then you make that call to the ed direct and then they guide you up to yes. labor and delivery floor where that wherever that is right right yeah excellent yeah we went straight up so it was nice that's nice that's always a good call well, LT, I really appreciate you taking the time to yeah. come out and discuss this call today. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. on your stork pin. Um, you're doing fantastic work, and we truly do appreciate you. Thanks for having us. All right. That's it for this edition of Case Studies. Uh, if you have any recommendations or cool calls that you want to uh, let us know about, use the SharePoint tab or reach out to your 7-8. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks.